You know, there's a lot of nannies out there looking for jobs, and sometimes you, you find the right family, and it's perfect, and sometimes it's just wrong. Can you imagine interviewing for somebody and going, I need to submit this to my crazy family? <laughs> We're going to hear about that today on My Crazy Family. My. My. Crazy. Crazy. Family. Family. My. Crazy. Family. Welcome to the program. Be sure to press subscribe wherever you download podcasts. You don't miss any episodes of the show. And leave us a review there on Apple Podcasts. In fact, if you do leave us a review there, take a screenshot of it and then uh, email it to us. Uh, Send it to contest at crazyfampod.com and uh, you'll be entered to win a $500 Amazon gift card that we've given out uh, towards the end of the year. So a uh, little extra thank you for uh, leaving that review and share your story with us. Crazyfampod.com is the website, or you can call 833-CRAY-FAM. That's 833-272-9326. Tony and Stacy Cole with you on today's episode of the program. What's going on? And don't forget, you you don't have to leave any names. I One of our stories today, I edited out a bunch of names because we don't want anybody to get, get into an awkward situation yeah. where... Hey, I, I I heard that you complained about me on a podcast. And then, we don't want that. And then they get murdered over the Thanksgiving dinner. And Ooh. then we covered the story on true crime today. And then also on this show where it's the story as well. They talked about this podcast that they shared a story on and killed somebody. And it's more content for us. So. Oh, and then they come back as a ghost. And then you've got yet yes. another story for your podcast. Then they haunt the, the family get togethers. And so, my gosh, look at this. It's a trifecta of stories, all because someone complained. That's yeah. That's the beauty of it all. <laughs> so, Jeez. but no, please do uh, do share anonymously. We can disguise voices as well. Happy to do that. Eight three three Cray Fam uh, or uh, CrazyFamPod dot com. So, what are we got going on? Our first story. I have bet. Actually, have you ever had a nanny before we start? Uh, I I have had a nanny for Harper. Nice. Yeah. It didn't make any sense, but we had a nanny. <laughs> oh, there's a story there, isn't there? Oh, I had a, a wife that was uh, not working at all, staying at home full time while I was working full time. But there was still a nanny at the house to Why? watch the child while <laughs> she was there. I don't know. I don't know. I just went along with a lot of things so people didn't get mad and complain and make life a living hell. I am divorced now. So, <laughs> but there's Jeez. so many things that made zero sense. I mean, my daughter asks me all the time because I have full custody of my daughter. Like, why did I have a nanny back then? I'm like, honey, I don't know. Like, your mom didn't want to, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, wow. Yeah. No. So did the nanny just take care of Harper or do like laundry and cleaning and things? Uh, uh, she did a little bit of all that too. Helped with all that stuff. Wow. Which was nice, you know, uh, but, you know, I don't know. And then uh, then I did everything else. I did all the cooking and everything while working full time. And then I just, you know, <laughs> one person just kind of sat there and lived in luxury and had servants <laughs> called her husband and the nanny. <laughs> and the, so, yeah, it made it made zero sense whatsoever. Well, that's a heck of a deal if you can get it. Yeah. Yeah. But apparently not Jeez. enough. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for that insight. My goodness. Yeah. Okay. So I've been a nanny for six years. It says I'm looking for a new position. And a couple of weeks ago, I interviewed for a job I thought would be perfect. The interviewer is a chiropractor with beautiful 11 month old twins, way above average pay for my area and free adjustments at her office. Yeah. Cool. I meet her at her chiropractic office for the interview and everything's going great until she shows me the room. It's a tiny little side office in the back of the clinic without windows, toys covering the floor and two um, pack in place. And that's it. And she tells me this is where I'll be watching the twins. I would be staying in a single room for 10 hours a day. (laughs) I asked her why she chose this instead of her home, and she said they just didn't have that big of a house, which seems like a bit of an excuse to me because the house surely is bigger than this walk-in closet. 
There's no cribs. They sleep in the pack and plays. No outings. She doesn't want them traveling or leaving the office. No walks until spring because it's too cold. My jaw was on the floor. <laughs> then she proceeds to tell me she's pregnant and I would also be taking care of a newborn in six months. I noped out of there real quick. I feel like this is the making of a crazy family story. Oh, completely. Those kids are fucked. Oh, my God. What's going on at the house that this doctor doesn't want anybody there? That That's the first thing I thought of. Maybe I'm too cynical, but I don't know. I don't even know if it's that or if it's more. This is someone who wants to control everything and does it literally by compartmentalizing it uh, in every way they can without having any sort of uh, regard for feelings or emotions, especially of those who can't really express them. Uh, and whatever she says is going to go because that puts her in control of the kids being in the little closet all day. And then she feels good because she knows that they're okay there. And doesn't matter that there's a nanny she'll she's paying that person to be in the in the closet too and Jeez. i don't know people are just nuts sometimes and they're controlling narcissistic ways they don't realize how nuts they look uh to the rest of the world because they they're convinced that everybody else is crazy and they're not yeah that's probably what's going on i you know i this sounds like a great environment for an hour or two, you know, yeah, just yeah. nice place to hang out for an hour or two and a uh, sure. nice secure place hanging out with mom. But then I, these kids like need somewhere else to go. Take them to a park, take them to I mean, sunlight, at least a room with fucking windows would be a nice. Yeah. Touch. And yes, in the home would be a lot better of a place. Uh, if you, if you're hiring a nanny, then the nanny should be at home with the kids doing nanny stuff. Don't hire a nanny if you're going to have the kids in the back room that you're still working at. That's not a place to do that. It's, yeah, they, they feel bad for these kids because that's, yeah, yeah. There, there's going to be so many more things. This is just the tip of the iceberg, I'm sure, with this mother uh, and what they have uh, brewing in their world. Yeah, something is is not right. Something doesn't feel good here. I, I spent a lot of hours at my dad's place of employment when I was growing up, and there is nothing more boring to a kid than being in a place where you can't, you have to be quiet. You can't screw around with things because, well, the equipment might kill you, that kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, in a doctor's office, a chiropractor, You've got to have, you can't have kids running around. You you don't want to hear kids screaming and it's just not, not professional. No, no, not at all. No, not at all. All right. Our next story. We are both adults. This is about my sister. Okay. At first I would brush it off, but now it's just annoying. I've always been into cosmetology. So when I got into doing hair, she suddenly got into doing hair as well. When I got into doing makeup, suddenly she wanted to start learning to do makeup. I started doing nails before, or started doing nails, and then she started doing nails. I'm graduating school to become an esthetician, and suddenly she's applying to schools to do the same exact thing that I'm doing. Now it's all she talks about. She's been asking me to visit the schools with her, but I don't want to. I haven't even had a chance to achieve my goals without her copying it. When I mention good things going on in my life, she ignores me. I'm not sure if it's intentional, but it still bothers me. I've started to brush it off. And when she mentions school or asks for tips with my previous hobbies she's picked up, I feel it's rude and I'm fed up. I feel like I'm also being immature and I want her to be successful on her own, but it's so annoying. It's like I can't ever have a moment without her riding my coattails. I can't ever have something that is my own thing. I, uh, I can't relate. I have no siblings, but I've seen it, uh, in, in many people where that happens. And yeah, I, I think a lot of times you're dealing with a very empty person that doesn't really know what they like and they seek, uh, direction from those around them as to how they should behave because they don't really know how to behave. 
uh, there's something that's that's kind of missing there, I think, in some folks. And so they got to kind of find direction from others. And if what you do is what they're copying and it kind of makes them look normal, then that's kind of what they're going to do. Not right, but there's people are weird. <laughs> Let's take a look at this from a different, a slightly different view. Yeah. And I say this as somebody that I copied my one of my older brothers. I, I looked up to him so much that I felt like, you know, if he was doing something, I wanted to do it too. So I guess I never thought about, am I encroaching on, on his success and, and, and things that he's doing. Um, my brother was the first one in my family to go to college. And because he went to college, I had to go to college and our relationship wasn't great. And I, now I'm beginning to wonder after reading this, I wonder if he felt like I was copying him and it somehow took away from his accomplishments. I, I, you didn't do the exact same thing professionally or anything though. I mean, there's a, there's a role model uh, place that older siblings play and that's good and healthy. And then there's this, like in the story where, one person does one specific interest and suddenly the other person who has had no interest in suddenly is massively interested in it. And they usually overdo it far more than the initial person who has the interest. So no, I don't, I don't think in that case, it was a copying thing. It was more of a, you know, you're looking up to somebody. Yeah, that's, that's a good way of looking at it, but I guess I can see, you know, if it just feels weird, like, would you go find your own thing, please? Sure. Leave me out of this. I I appreciate that you like what I'm doing, but go go deal with it yourself. You're an adult. You figure it out. I had to figure it out. You figure it out. Yeah. It's always interesting, especially as an adult. It's one thing kids copy kids. But as an adult, when people will ask you like what you do, and then they'll immediately express how they could do that too. Oh. But this or that prevented it or something, or they just, or they just, you know, they, they decided to not to. And it's, I, I always find it amusing with radio, especially with yeah. podcasting. Uh, Cause it, it says somebody, you know, what do you do? I do podcasting. I worked in radio for, you know, 20 some years and I've been doing this for about 10. So it's like, clearly like, this is my passion. It's what I've spent my life's work doing. And then for someone to be like, Oh, yeah, I thought about doing a podcast. I did some radio in college once, or I, uh, I, 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 everybody says I have a good voice. I should start a oh. podcast. Ah. I should start a that, podcast. That's about- the, I, I've always been told I have a voice for radio. Yeah, I know. Unfortunately, you have no personality or talent, but uh, that's the part they're not telling you. Uh, but it's, it's almost, it's like totally degrades all of the years of work that you put into mastering a craft by someone just saying, oh, I, I might do that. I might look into starting a podcast. My husband wants to start a podcast. I keep telling my husband he should start a podcast. I hear that all the time. I'm <laughs> just like, I want to say, you know, I I thought about being a surgeon. Uh, I played operation once or twice. <laughs> and I really thought, you know, I got the chops for this. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't hit the buzzer at all. At all. Once. I got to be, I could be a surgeon. Totally. Yeah. I mean, that's the equivalency of it. It's that, it's a, that absurd. It's like if you have like legitimate questions, they're like, but it's just it's a weird thing to say to somebody to almost express that they could do exactly what you do if they just decided to just, you know, want, yeah, if you know, they just tried, they would have done the same thing. Like, it's like no big deal, like no work at all. It's like, fuck you. It's like, I, and they, they're so oblivious to it, too. People are so oblivious as to when they say those things, just how bizarre they sound. Or how insulting it can come across as. And you're just like, okay, great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you've had no training, but you think you could do this. Go for and it. And you and I both know that radio, sure, it seems like you're just sitting in a room with a microphone and you listen to music the whole time. We've pulled the, the curtain back on radio yeah. many times during this podcast that it is not at all what you think it is. No. It's not like, WKRP in Cincinnati. It's it's traumatizing. It's sexist. It's yeah. low paying. Exactly. 
Well, and, 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 and then to be able to execute a long form show is not just two people sitting down and talking there. No. Like you have to understand how to move things forward, how to keep things going, how, you know, how to draw people in. There's so many things psychologically that go into it that I do. I couldn't do well for probably the first 10 years of working in it. I couldn't do yeah. long form. I could do short, which is like that was this is and a little funny thing. But to sit down and do a show like this, I, I couldn't have done it for the first 10 years well, by any means. Um, and so it, it's just, uh, uh, again, I, I go back to the operation analogy. <laughs> it's like, I thought about being a surgeon. Absolutely. Play That's some exactly what it is. Once. I mean, you know, it's so easy to say, yeah, I could have been a doctor. Um, could you have gotten through the training and the internships and losing your first patient and all of that? Probably not. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Like I worked for free for the first five years uh, and uh, did pretty yeah. much 14 hour days. That was fun. What did you do? Were you? Oh, you were playing uh, baseball or basketball or whatever. Like, oh, OK. Yeah. Um, it's just uh, anyway. Continuing. I remember I was a, an intern because that, that's how a lot of people in radio start is mm -hmm. interning. And I say that with the air quotes because. Yeah. All that means is they've allowed you access into the radio studio. Uh, They're not going to pay you and you are their bitch. You're basically kind of like an indentured servant in many yes. ways. I was in downtown Minneapolis for a top 40 station. It was amazing that I was allowed to be an intern there because there was a huge waiting list. But somehow I passed the interview. I, I was going to school to be a broadcaster. All of these things. And... Basically, all I did was I parked in a parking ramp. I paid money out of my own pocket to park in that ramp. I went upstairs to the building, to the studio. I sat there. I organized the music. I pulled music because you had to, they were on CDs. So you had to have them ready. And I took orders for food. Yeah. That's all I did. That's the training I got. I was immersed in the, the on-air experience. And once in a while, I got to say, hi, Tony, because uh -huh. his name was Tony. Uh huh. You know, I got to say something to Tony on air and yeah. I was like, oh, my God, it was just on the air in Minneapolis. Yeah. But that was it. That was my intern experience. And then when Tony was off air, he'd get off at I think it was one or two a.m. I had to walk by myself in a parking ramp at two a.m. at bar time in Minneapolis by myself and drive home. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I thought that I was going to be assaulted. Yeah. You know, and all this, but that's for, what we did free. because yeah. it was such an extraordinary opportunity. Anybody I knew in radio was like, Oh, you're interning for him. Is yeah. This, is this, uh, what station? KDWB? Yeah. Tony fly. I was fly. I didn't know you were an intern for Tony fly. I was. Yeah. He was awesome. Yeah. Oh, he was a great DJ. He's, and done, he's he's a great guy, actually. He's a very, very nice gentleman. So he was yeah. wonderful. I had no idea. I, I, he's at Serious Hits 1 now, I believe. Yeah. And, oh, and yeah. He, he made it big. I mean, he was. Yeah. He is. He was he's great. Still, I used to listen to air checks of him when he was doing nights and so good. And just like that. It was like the bar of like how you do good radio at that yeah. point in time. Yeah. Tony Fly. He was amazing. Yeah. And and then. I got to intern for Zany K, who was on after him. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other story. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> I remember. Nice that. guy. He yeah. was always nice to me. Yeah. But he was up to some shady shit. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. The old days of radio. I didn't. I didn't yeah. know that you interned for Tony Fly. I had no idea. Wow. Yeah. That's funny because I was always listening to his air checks, like probably in the cubicle next to you in Wausau. <laughs> Because it was like, this is good radio. Well, wow, that's fun. Yeah, you probably heard me go, hi, Tony. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And that's it. Wow. And I'd like tell everybody, oh, my God, I was just on here. That's I funny. said hi. That is. Ooh. That's funny. Huh. Yeah. Oh, what else we got? All world. <sighs> good times. OK, so, I digress. Next yes. story. Sorry, I just went off into La La Land. So my, my son was born nine months ago. Uh -huh. My family lives far away and has complained for nine months that they haven't gotten to see him due to our and their work and life schedules. We finally made time for all of us to get together. They came and they stayed in a hotel in our own town. They were excited to come and we were excited to have them. However, the day that they got here, 
they complained about everything from the possible snakes at our local park to the malls not having enough stores. It was too hot, not being at their own home to sleep in their own beds and so much more. The complaining was constant. I ignored all of the negativity and just tried to have fun and tried to enjoy their company. Nonetheless, they made the days really long. They arrived on Thursday and they were supposed to stay until Monday. On Saturday evening, after the baby woke up from his afternoon nap, I called them to let them know that he was up and they denied coming over to play with him. They said they wanted to stay at the hotel in their pajamas and just read. Then on Sunday morning, they called and told me they just wanted to go home. I was shocked. (laughs) And clearly it kind of hurt our feelings. We felt like they didn't want to be here. And we were both confused. I mean, was it them? Was it us? Was it the baby? Why are they acting like this? After nine months of waiting, why would they leave early? (laughs) The fuck is going on here? Um, Narcissists. (laughs) All, all roads lead to narcissism. Uh, I don't know. I, I would have no idea uh, in, in something like that because how I would react in that sort of a situation as the parent where you're uh, going to visit or, or the grandparent where you're going to you know visit your grandchild um, and you'd planned it and you know, you're not intruding. You're not like there the day after the birth and everybody wants to kind of have their own time. Um, but that doesn't make any sense. It's like, well, you know, we like this and it's great that we saw him, but we really don't want to be involved in the um, nurturing part of this. <laughs> Other than, yeah, they exist, but, you know, how's well, the cat? What is the deal with the possible <laughs> snakes at our local park? Okay, don't go to the park then. Snakes at the park. It's like, that's like, that's quite a reach. For uh, a reason not to do something, there's snakes at the park. You really want to be careful. <laughs> like, huh? What? Like he likes the swing. That one over there, the baby swing. Is, there might be snakes over. So we're gonna, we're just gonna stay at, at the hotel. We're gonna watch a little HGTV. Get caught up yeah. on the latest shiplap that Joanna Gaines is putting on something. <laughs> and um, and uh, yeah, you know, me and your father, we might head out early too because. You know, we're going to get some breakfast and, you know, I got to be got to be back home later for what I just I got to be. Why? Well, you know, they're the cat. Your, your cat's dead. Uh, you know, I know. But, you know, we, this is what we want to do. <laughs> yeah, this this whole story just just sounds weird. I mean, uh, unless this was such a nice hotel. Yeah. You know, what if this was like a four star hotel where like. It is just so amazing that they didn't want to leave. They're like, fuck our family. We're just going to stay in this hotel. <laughs> Have you ever been to a hotel where you're like, I don't need to go anywhere. I just need to stay here. Um, Yeah. I where It's, it's pretty much its own uh, uh, island unto itself, if you would. Yeah. But, but, you know, then you at least invite them over and say, hey, this hotel is awesome. Love this place. We're going to, you know, we'd feel more comfortable just staying here. Why don't you come on over? Yeah. Something to uh, I- encourage that. Uh, what, what is your, what's your take on this? Why do you think that the parents would act this way? I wonder if something happened. I mean, if not, something, yeah. this rings really true to the way my family acts. Like there may be some low level offense took place Mm -hmm. that nobody really detected because not everybody comes from a dysfunctional family. So nobody really recognized it, but somebody got offended by something and said, well, fuck this. I'm done. Yeah. They're playing. I'm going to go hide in my room and I'm going to punish you all with my silence. Yes. Yeah. You, you offended me when I went to pick up the baby and you showed me how to do it, even though I was a mother before. Yeah. And I know how to do this. You showing me that, you know, and I'm just saying it could be something that tiny. Yeah. Very passive aggressive in terms of how they're handling this. Uh, but I guess if someone's going to do that, just let them do it and whatever. Because <laughs> you, you, it's not for you to dissect. Sometimes when I think people do this sort of narcissistic, let me go be quiet in the corner bullshit. They want you to dig in. They want you. Oh, what's wrong? What happened? And, you know, any sort of attention is good attention. 
even yes. if they're throwing a fit. And they may not be throwing a fit, you know, with their fists in the air and lashing out. They're doing it quietly. And sometimes that's worse because then you have to guess and try and figure out what's wrong and what did I do? And at the end, you really didn't do anything. They're just fucking nuts. And they're obsessed with themselves. And everyone must cater to them so they can feel good about existing. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I hear it where it's... Uh, the day they got there, they complained about everything from the possible snakes of the park and the malls don't have enough stores and it's hot and it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's always, everything is bad. Everything is negative. Everything is bad. And you the thing is, you ever try bringing that up to people who are like that? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, you don't understand. I have all of these things going on. Yeah, but you know what? Not everything is horrible. Not everything is a tragedy and not everybody's out to get you. But you pointed out, it's like, I'm not always negative. I don't always complain about this. <laughs> really? <laughs> I have a fucking bingo card that I've written up that <laughs> for your visits. <laughs> where It's like, <laughs> when this person says this, put a daub on the, the, the board there. And, yeah, but uh, there's never a prize when you win bingo, is there? <laughs> Not for that. I guess the prize by the time you get uh, blackout, it's the the visit's usually over. <laughs> it's like God. it's like okay, we you you made it, but you filled out the whole bingo card in the first thirty minutes. I saw you. That means you have to go home. <laughs> yeah, as soon as the card is full, you've got to go. <laughs> it's just like pull up the bingo card. <laughs> hey, see this? Okay, congratulations. That's a new record. Good seeing you. We'll see you at Christmas. Bye-bye. Oh my God. It's tough. It's it's really tough. And I just I I feel for this this person that wrote in it. This is really frustrating because you know you you're putting a whole weekend aside, which you know, you probably need sleep. You've got a newborn, and then you have, you know, another adolescent to deal with, you know. Oh. Oh, it is. It, it's like dealing with more children. And that's that's what makes it very frustrating as an adult, because you're already dealing with adolescence. And it's like, wait a second here. Uh, you are an adult and you were once a parent that, you know, did parently things and parental things that made sense. Now you're acting like a child. Like, what the hell is this? What's going on? Yeah. And and sometimes then expecting the child to be thinking on a more adult level uh, than they are. I, I know there, there's so many weird things that go along with this sort of thing, but I can kind of relate. I can kind of relate. I gathered that. And I'm going to say I let's just say somebody you've made plans that, you know, this weekend we're going to see the baby. We haven't been able to see the baby. It's you know, pandemic, all this stuff, our schedules, whatever, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. We get there and it just doesn't feel right. Like I'm not feeling great. Um, maybe my allergies are acting up. I'm just in a shitty mood. I am okay with somebody calling me up and saying, Hey, Stace, I'm, I'm so glad to be here, but let me level with you. I'm feeling like shit. Yeah. I just, something, I, something's off about me. I don't know if my brain chemicals are fucked up and my allergies are bad and my back is killing me. I'm going to do my best. I want to see all of you, but I just, I'm not feeling it this weekend. Yeah. If somebody says that to me, cool. I have so much fucking respect for you to yeah. say, here's the space I'm in and it sucks right now. And it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with me, but here's where I am. Mm -hmm cool yeah just be honest all right uh that's gonna wrap up today's episode of my crazy family if you like the show leave us a review there at apple podcast send me a screenshot of it to uh, contest at uh, crazyfampod.com get entered to win that 500 dollars amazon gift card and uh, get yourself hooked up uh, with that possibly um, uh, towards the end of the year and share your stories with us as well crazyfampod.com is a website or the phone number 833-CRAY Bam, to get in on all of that. My. My. Crazy. Crazy. Family. Family. My. Crazy. Family. Family.